Hey everybody, James Williams here for the Believe in UCLA podcast. Excited to be back. Um, we'll have Josh Woods coming back here sometime soon. He's just getting started with the CFL season. He did go to Canada, I believe, sometime in the middle of um, last month, I believe. A couple, It's been a couple weeks now. Uh, I know they are playing the Toronto um, Argonauts, if I have that correct. They're supposed to be playing that. Uh, this weekend so best of luck to josh um, as he gets ready for that season opener but there's a lot of things that we got to catch up on when it comes to ucla football and yeah there's just kind of a lot of stuff going on in general with college football Um, i'm gonna hit some of the quick topics here i have a list of things uh, just some news and notes that i do want to go through and maybe talk about just a little bit um kind of catch you guys up for those who have maybe been out of the loop um yeah, we did have an episode last week, obviously, with the unfortunate passing of Bill Walton, a UCLA legend. Uh, we went ahead and we talked to Larry Farmer, a former teammate of Bill Walton and a former men's basketball coach there at UCLA. Um, it was good to talk with Larry. Make sure you guys go and check that episode out. Um, we went and talked about kind of the relationship he had with Bill Walton, and we talked about uh, some other reaction regarding the passing of Bill Walton. So if you guys missed that podcast, make sure you guys go check it out. Also, make sure you guys go ahead and like, subscribe, um, leave us a five-star review on your favorite audio and podcast platform. It'd greatly be appreciated. Um, But with that being said, let's dive into the list here. One thing that has stood out to me is the number 25 and some of the the topics I'm going to be talking about here, and I'll explain some of that why in a minute. Um, but real quick, um, I did see a tweet. It, it's probably been a couple of weeks now. I, again, I didn't address, um, some of these topics only because, um, I had last week's episode dedicated just to Bill, uh, Walton as the topic. So didn't touch on a lot of the other things, but going to try and nail some of them here. Uh, one being tied in Hudson hammer mill. Um, he did have successful surgery. He did tweet that out. I believe it's been at least a week or so now. Um, Did take a a little bit of time to get that surgery kind of squared away. Um, I'm sure there's some reasoning behind that. I I kind of have noticed some of that um, when it comes to ACLs. They're not immediate, and I kind of would assume any surgery that's needed would be um, immediate. But um, whatever the case may be, he's on the road to recovery. Um, I believe Deshaun Foster did talk to the guys over at Bruin Report Online uh, recently and did mention I think the goal would be at some point uh, to try and see if it's possible to get um, another year of eligibility for Hudson there and see if he's able to make the return. For those unfamiliar, um, it was sometime, I think, right before the either the spring showcase, and I know it was definitely before the spring game, uh, or the spring, it was before the spring showcase and maybe writing before the Friday Night Lights practice, if I remember correctly. Uh, but you did have Hudson Hammermail go down with that ACL injury during the middle of practice. Um, when media was there, the public, you know, it was open practice was open to the public. So there was several people who saw the unfortunate injury there to Hudson hammer mill. Um, so obviously West, uh, wishing him, um, the best with his speedy recovery. Um, I know Josh Woods had mentioned, um, I know Josh had mentioned that he did talk to Hudson at the spring game. So I know the injury had already happened then and had a chance to catch up with him, um, during that time. So, um, it sounded like he was in good spirits overall. Um, but yeah, again, wishing the best for for Hudson Hammermill there. Um, and again, uh, the, one of the more exciting topics, and again, I talked about the number 25 earlier. Um, there's there's several different reasons, and, and we'll play them out here throughout the episode here um, as I talk about them. But obviously, uh, one being the college football um, or the CFB 25 video game that's supposed to be coming out by EA Sports. Um, I believe the game is coming out July 19th. Um, the goal is to try and have some sort of uh, content r- related to the game, uh, maybe an article, maybe an episode regarding the game coming out sometime soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll try and uh, get some more details, some more reaction to the game. I know they did have an event out in Florida where they had several media members invited out to that event. I believe uh, some of the cover athletes might have been there as well. Um, if I remember seeing some of that correctly on Twitter. So we'll try and have some of that reaction. Uh, but just some of my quick thoughts. For me personally, I've been a little busy the past couple days. I went out and bought a PlayStation 5 because I wanted to be prepared for when this game came out. Um, I don't know. I just kind of had it in my mind that 
if I waited too long or waited too long and closer to the release of the game, maybe it would be harder to get a console at that time. So I wanted to square that away and I got that taken care of and got the game pre-ordered so I can have the early three day access for that. So hopefully um, the goal is to maybe try and get some sort of content going there. Uh, maybe I'll live stream some of my gameplay. Not that it's a guarantee it's going to be any good now. Um, but the goal is to maybe have some sort of uh, live stream where I'm playing the game. Um, but it'll be more focused on having you guys come in uh, and I guess watch me play. But more more importantly, an opportunity for us to kind of talk football and talk about a number of different things, much like we would do during the Twitter spaces during the season. Um, just another way to communicate with you guys and you guys can make fun of the way. Um, I'm playing and probably just throwing a bunch of Hail Marys for the most part. But overall, I am excited for the game because the last game that came out, I believe it was that RG3 on the cover. Uh, yeah, RG3. It's been that long. I think it's been at least 10 years now. I think I was in high school or maybe early in college when that last game came out. So excited to get that game back going. Uh you know, Madden has obviously continued to be out, but I did not really uh, play it as much. One of the things I did like about it is you could play the Road to Glory um, kind of story mode there and then transfer your player over in, into the Madden series. Um, my understanding from what I've been able to kind of hear, uh, some of the reaction is, is they're not having that kind of crossover this year, uh, which maybe is a little silly because you can pre-order both the Madden and the College Football 25 game together um uh, but they don't sync the way they used to uh, at least for the time being so um but still gonna be cool looking forward to playing the road to glory mode obviously one thing i i guess i didn't really catch on to when i was playing the game back in the day maybe i dabbled in it a little bit was the dynasty mode apparently that's a big thing with a lot of the folks i was actually in a dynasty league um kind of casually uh later on in the, whenever that last game came out, it wasn't like right away, but just to dabble in it. So I'm looking forward to kind of getting back into that a little bit. Um, and maybe there's a league that we, a dynasty mode that we can set up amongst the UCLA community. Um, and we could figure that out. I don't know how we would go about deciding who gets UCLA or whatnot. I probably wouldn't bother or not. I it wouldn't matter to me if I had UCLA or not. I'm sure if, if a lot of UCLA fans are involved, someone would want, to, to be in control of uh, UCLA, but we'll figure that out when the time comes. Um, but looking forward to that. Hopefully several of you guys are involved. If you guys are interested in that, uh, maybe that's something we do. Leave me a note, reach out to me on Twitter and let me know that's something you guys are interested in. And maybe that's something that we can do. Uh, but definitely excited for the game. Um, it is coming out again, July 19th is the release date, the, like the normal release date. Um, if you pre-order, you get three days of early access. So I think that will put it out on the 15th. I'm not sure if that's in the morning, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, maybe the 16th. I'm doing my math wrong here. Um, but yeah, so the 15th, the 16th, um, it should be out sometime around then. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll see how that goes. But again, looking forward to playing the game. Um, I think it'd be pretty cool just to kind of, you know, the one thing that's different this year from previous years of the game, previous editions of the game, is the name, image, and likeness component. And obviously, um, prior, you didn't have a lot of names on the on for the roster and the teams in the game. I know there would be some, some kind souls out there who would make it available. They would type out every name, and um, you can go ahead and download that file, um, which was very helpful. But now... With the NIL stuff going on, uh, EA did, I think, again, I, I don't think the players got the best deal of this all, but I think they all got like $500 and a copy of the game to be in the game. Um, but you will have the name. So one of the things I do enjoy about it is, you, I'll, at least for me personally, I'll be able, if I'm playing as other teams, playing against other teams, be able to get familiar with a lot of the other guys and the names on um these other teams outside of the UCLA who I'm obviously covering day to day, you know, cause I'd have no business knowing uh, who the, you know, the, the safety for Nebraska is. Um, but I think if I'm playing the game over time, I think I would probably, you know, have a better idea of something like that. Um, 
So looking forward to that uh, from that standpoint. Obviously, speaking of getting familiar with a lot of the other teams and whatnot for this upcoming season, and including if you want uh, projections from uh, the different preview magazines, those are out now. They're starting to come out. I know Phil Steele is coming out maybe sometime next month, I believe. Uh, but you have um, Lindsay and Athlon and some of these other magazines that are already on the newsstands. I was actually at Barnes and Noble and picked up one of those magazines. Um, and that just means the football season is right around the corner. So I'm excited about that. Um, so make sure you guys go and check that out. If you guys are interested in the preview magazines, they are available. I believe uh, UCLA was ranked 14th on, in both of the magazines I saw in the Big Ten, ranked 14th. Um, so not the highest of expectations. Uh, maybe they finish somewhere in that range, maybe a little above uh, and whatnot. We'll see. Uh, but speaking of rankings, a few other notes on that. I mentioned the number 25 earlier. One was about the, the football game, the video game coming out. The other is it looks like I'll be um, doing another season of AP Top 25 voting for college football. I'm excited to be doing that. Um, I guess there's nothing. I mean, they, they've reached out to me and asked me to do it. And I said, yes, obviously um, I had a good time doing it last year for my first year, um, you know, was in the good graces of some fan bases. And I had uh, some of them kind of turn on me fairly quickly when I didn't rank their team the same from week to week. So uh, I'm talking to you, Kansas State. I know you guys weren't entirely happy with me, even though you were like two weeks prior uh, during the season. Then two weeks later, you guys are uh, – you know, getting after me, but it's all in good fun. I don't mind it. Um, it's good to kind of have, um, you know, something like being able to to vote in the AP top 25 because it allows me to kind of keep a closer eye than I maybe normally would on a lot of the other college football teams outside of uh, UCLA and the teams that they're playing, right? So um, it gives me a good reason to kind of follow along with the, the rest of what's going on um, within the sport. So I'm excited to be doing that again. Um, the other reason why I mentioned the A, not the AP top 25, but just the number 25 is a lot of UCLA fans, or at least some of the ones that I interact with on Twitter, um, have the expectation now that the, tw the 2025 recruiting class for UCLA will be a top 25 class when it comes, um, down to signing day, the early, the, at least the early signing day period. Um, and it's starting to look that way with some of the names they've been able to get. Um, things are looking up for sure. Um, I have it right here currently on, on three sports and their website. They have UCLA ranked 29, uh, 24, seven sports has the Bruins ranked 26 and rivals. Um, obviously we had Tracy McDonald on, um, earlier, uh, a, a couple weeks ago. Make sure you guys check that one out. We talked recruiting with Tracy McDonald, the reporter for Bruin Blitz and rivals, um, rivals has UCLA ranked as 25. Now don't give Tracy a hard time because Tracy's not the one who puts uh, the rankings together for these classes and whatnot. He just reports on the team. So don't give Tracy any trouble, um, for, for that. But, um, yeah, currently the rivals has them the highest. I'll repeat it again. R rivals has UCLA's recruiting class for 2025 ranked number 25. Currently, uh, 24, seven sports has them at 26. And I think it's only by a few points. Um, you get another recruit in there, um, depending on who's ahead of you and what they do. UCLA is likely to, to land in the top 25 there at some point. And then on three, a little bit behind uh, UCLA is in the um, the rankings there, but uh, 29. So still in the same ballpark um, for UCLA. And I think much like some of the UCLA fans I've interacted with on Twitter, it's starting to look like UCLA is, is headed for a top 25 class. Um, they did sign is it Garrison Blank or not signed, but got a commitment from Garrison Blank, um, a offensive lineman in the state of California. He is uh, a guy that has put um, UCLA's total for the recruiting class at 10, I believe. I believe they are at 10. And that's noteworthy because UCLA's recruiting class for 2024 um, obviously some of them enrolled early, but four of the 10, uh, for this past recruiting class in 2024, uh, enrolled early. So there were 10 total recruits that signed with last year or with this current class that's going to be incoming for 2024, but you already have 10 committed for 
the 2025 class. There's still more that they can get. Obviously, there's going to be a couple of roster spots available with you're kind of getting the end of those um, guys with the extra year of eligibility because of the pandemic season and just guys that are graduating in general and those even those who may uh, enter the draft early and whatnot. There's going to be um, some significant spots available on that roster, some scholarships available on that roster. So I would expect we get a few more names in terms of this recruiting class that will build um, it to be only larger there for 2025. So something to keep in mind. I know a few UCLA fans, as I've mentioned already, um, are excited about that. Um, some are already starting to talk uh, top 15. We'll see what happens um, when it comes to recruiting. Things are only going to get um, more hectic as we get closer to the season, right? But right now, it's still official visit season. A lot of stuff can happen. So I am keeping an eye on it, but I'm not, um, you know, tied down to writing down any specific, doing a whole lot of specific articles about a lot of the incoming uh, commits or the commits that are happening just because there's still so much time in which things can happen. So, uh you know, we'll get down to it. And obviously looking forward to signing day and what things will look like when we reach that point, because I think it's going to be one of the busier signing days for me uh, compared to what I've done for when covering UCLA in the past. Now, obviously you guys know things with Chip Kelly recruiting wasn't really flowing the way that it is now. So uh, if they're already at 10 recruits already, and they only had 10 recruits last year, um, you know, Deshaun Foster and company were kind of hitting uh, the recruiting cycle here. Um, even though they got a little bit of a late start because of the hire um, there and the timing of which it happened, uh, they're kind of hitting the gas and they're not letting up anytime soon. Um, one of the more significant commits, he's probably, at least I know on 24-7, sitting at the top of the of the recruiting class for UCLA for 2025 is, okay, Let me. I'm going to try and pronounce the last name here, and I apologize if we butcher it here, but Madden E.A. Malay E.A. My lay Ava, I got to work on the name, obviously. It'll come to me much like Darius Moasau did and Olidejo, and Olidejo or Olufemi Olidejo. Um, so much like it, it took me with those names, I'm sure I'll get Madden's name down here, but he's the Warren quarterback, um, you know, is in the top 300 of the ESPN recruiting rankings and with everything else. So um, a highly regarded prospect. Um, I don't think I talked much about him. Did see him when Warren had their showcase. Looking forward to the 2025, the 2024 high school season that will be coming up here in a few months as well. And obviously runs parallel with the college football season. Um, excited to get out to some of these local schools, especially Warren and seeing Madden play and following a little bit of his high school career a little bit closer now. Um, I had seen him play before, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe it was the Downey Warren game this past year. I believe I was at that game. Um, but again, just kind of looking forward to watching him play. Now that I know he's committed to UCLA, he's a name I'm keeping an eye on. Obviously, Carson Cox, et cetera, uh, from, Oaks, from Oak Hills um, is another name. So uh, looking forward to watching Madden play. Um, some quick news on the Madden front. Madden did, was part of, I believe it was seven or eight guys that were announced as part of this NIL high school class with Adidas. He did sign with, or did agree to an NIL deal with, adidas um there were no terms released or anything along those lines um i'm sure his likeness may be used in some capacity maybe in commercials or whatnot um it's still maybe a little early to know maybe the next time i talk to madden um we'll get a chance to discuss some of that um here in the future but um i think it speaks highly when you have a brand like adidas and they're they're getting uh, seven or eight guys and obviously they're trying to get guys that they think uh, will make an impact now at the next level uh, and by that, I mean college and whatnot. And I think it says something if a guy like Madden is among that group. I know some people have mentioned, oh, he's with Adidas. What does that mean for when he gets to college? And uh, obviously, UCLA is with the Jordan brand and Nike. Um, I don't think it will have a significant impact. I think it's separate. Uh, maybe it's just a one-year thing. I don't know if they're necessarily going to have him to some sort of long-term deal. Maybe, And if they do, maybe it's an off-the-field situation for Nico, not Nico, that's uh, Madden's brother who's with Tennessee, expected to be the starting quarterback. But for Madden, um, I think maybe Madden's wearing Adidas gear outside of, you know, any obligation to UCLA. 
something, whatever the case may be there. But when he's wearing UCLA gear, it will be um, Jordan apparel, obviously. Um, so something to keep an eye on. But I, th- I think, again, that's worth mentioning. A noteworthy uh, kind of NIL situation there for a guy like Madden, who's still at the high school level um, and will be representing UCLA as long as that commitment stays true and he signs uh, his national letter of intent during the signing period. Um, speaking of NIL, um, I thought it was interesting. Another name that popped up was Ethan Garbers, who expect who is expected to be the starting quarterback for the Bruins in 2024. Uh, he signed, or it was announced that he is part of an NIL deal, that he um, has an NIL deal with Leaf Cards, Leaf Trading Cards. Um, Leaf is one of the many brands that are out there with um, – you know, Upper Deck and a lot of these other companies that are out now um, that do the sports cards. Um, so maybe Ethan Garbers will be getting his own sports card. Not entirely sure what else his NIL deal will include. Obviously, don't know how much that though that information was not um, made available, um, at least early on. So, um, so a couple quarterbacks, one that's expected to be the future for UCLA with Madden, and then obviously the current quarterback there who is expected to be the starter, Ethan Garbers, um, has a deal going on with Leaf Trading Cards. Um, so interesting to see how things play out for him. Um, trying to think what else I have on my list here. Um, one other thing that comes to mind, John Emery Jr. Um, it looked like for the longest he was going to be headed to UCLA. Um just kind of the way things appear to be shaking out. There's a lot of rumblings and different stuff. A lot of the other UCLA reporters uh, were mentioning some of that as well. Um, you know, usually if I don't see anything kind of official or um, have someone tell me that personally, it's hard for me to say, um, yeah, I know for sure they were close to talking or, or he was close to transferring into UCLA. Um, I believe he obviously he did take a visit there. So there was some interest. Um, you know, it was maybe even kind of alluded by Deshaun Foster when he was talking to Bruin Report online in uh, one of their latest podcast episodes that a certain running back was expected uh, to be joining them. And that was even that was just within this past week that uh, Deshaun Foster had said that obviously there appeared to be some sort of snag in that. And maybe part of it could have been academics. I don't entirely know for sure what the case may be. Um, so don't take the academics part as. Uh, the official reason why, but it could have been as, as easy as that um, as why things maybe didn't play out the way that they did, because a lot of the other transfer portals in those situations, a lot of things moved fast. This one didn't move fast, even though there had been rumblings uh, for a little while, but the running back from LSU announced that he's going to be returning to LSU and withdraw his name from the transfer portal. So um, UCLA still does have a scholarship to offer out there. Um, Maybe they go ahead and they still try and look for another running back if that's the direction they want to go in, or maybe they keep that scholarship and decide to award it to someone who's already on the roster that's serving as a walk-on at the moment. So something to keep an eye on in terms of the roster storyline. Um, we'll keep an eye out for that. Um, so yeah, that's about all I got for you guys. Uh, just wanted to come up, come up here and catch up with you guys on some of the stuff that's been going on. Talk about a few things, talk about a few things that I'm excited about. As I mentioned that college football video game, the the moment that comes out, it's kind of pushing it. I know obviously uh, we're going to be starting up uh, with training camp here, but if I'm not going to be out at practice, I'm going to probably be at home playing this game as much as I can. And as soon as that game's coming out, if I'm not working in any capacity, I'm going to be playing the video game and and there's not going to be a whole lot of stuff going on because I want to get as much time in on that game as I can while I'm kind of freed up as much as possible. But with that being said, thank you guys so much as always for listening. As I mentioned earlier, if you have the opportunity to do so, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you give us a like or a review, uh, leave a comment, let us know uh, what you think of the podcast, what you would like to see on the podcast. I think we have a few things in the works that you guys may be excited about. So stay tuned for that. And again, if you are subscribed to the podcast, uh, and again, it's free, so make sure you subscribe to the podcast. You'll get those notifications uh, when podcasts such as this are made available. You'll have that pop up on your phone, on your mobile device, whatever the case may be, letting you know that there's another episode with some content that you guys are going to want to listen to here on the Believe in UCLA football podcast. So as always, thank you guys so much for listening. And again, uh, as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.